Let's start recording. Hey, what is text and outdoors? But well, we're going to find out today. Hi, my name is Roy Canterbury. I'm going to be hosting on Arch Talk 101. And we have Justin on, on the line with us here. And he's going to tell us a little bit about himself, how he got started in archery, and a little bit about his, his business. And we're just going to learn a whole lot today. Welcome to the show, Justin. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, I'm doing good. I, uh, well, uh, I've been hunting, I guess, for quite a while now with my bow. I started back um, probably 2007, whenever I was a senior. I bought uh, my first bow myself back in uh back then it was a uh, pearson quad 440 um and uh it's kind of funny but i bought it at school so technically it's not a firearm but we brought a i guess it's can still considered a weapon and so we bought it there i bought it in the parking lot and uh we thought yeah. we were like big and bad and stuff like that of course you know but uh anyways uh it took me a little while to get used to what I was doing. I used to shoot um, just just traditional whenever I was younger with my grandpa, and uh, it was years later. I did some shooting whenever I was in scouts and everything like that, and we, you know, I got my archery merit badge and all that stuff. But I kind of dropped the bow down for a while and never really picked it back up. And and that year I went out there and I was determined to try to shoot something, and um, I shot a a branch underneath me and that I didn't see it whenever I was drawing down getting close to dark at a at a doe and she was right underneath the stand and I just smacked that arrow right <laughs> dead center into it and uh I, I knew right then and there that it, it wasn't going to be nearly as easy um as what I was thinking that it was going to be right out of the gate um but but I was hooked and uh going forward all through high uh, college and stuff like that I ended up um, eventually uh, trading in that that actually I still have the bow come to think of it but I got a uh, a Matthews chill um, and started hunting with it shot a few deer with it and then kind of progressively worked my way up and, and I'm back I've been shooting Matthews for about the past four years now shot well uh, elites and um, also obsession in between that time frame but uh there's something about these i'm still shooting the v3 i know there's several other models that's come out since then but it's still to to this day probably one of the sweetest shooting bows i've ever had and still still holding on to it so um but uh yeah that's pretty much you know my my entry into to um archery up to this point um and this past fall um uh, I decided that I wanted to actually open up a outfitting business out here in Missouri. Um, we, I've been thinking about this for years and I've, I've hunted a lot. I've killed, been very successful with, you know, a lot of different species with my bow. But uh, as I've gotten older and with a lot of the philanthropy work that I've done over the years uh, in the nonprofit organization that I'm in, within back home in Louisiana, um, taking others pe people out and experiencing experiencing their joy and their first time experiences uh, and experiences of a lifetime, especially with the children that we take out that have disabilities and stuff like that. Um, with Swole Fest, I, I've started to realize that, you know, um, it's so much more than just going out and hunting yourself. It's taking others out and experiencing stuff for the first time for them or their largest year or whatever the accolades they may accomplish with you. And so I decided I wanted to do that. Um, and so uh, this Friday, we'll have our first group of hunters in. Uh, I'll take, I'm only taking a total of eight archery hunters. I've had seven out of eight booked um, for this year. So they'll hunt for five days, starting on the 28th. And then I'll have the next group come in right after that. And they'll hunt five days before we have our rifle season up here in Missouri. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's what Tecton Outdoors kind of uh, is all about. And um, the name uh, Tecton is kind of a funny story. Um, I was working <laughs> at my previous job at the time, um, and uh, I was just reflecting in the middle of the night of just 
all the different things that were not quite, you know, kosher over there. Uh, and uh, I just was thinking, I was like, man, it's just, it's just a tectonic disaster and mess over there. And while I was in the shower and um, I was like, man, you know, it was really hitting me that maybe this is something that I was called to do. And I was like, well, I'm going to look up the derivative and the, the, the lineage of tectonic. And I knew what tectonic plates are and all that stuff, but I wanted to kind of know the history of that, that word. And that's just kind of how I am with everything. I'm always diving into, you know, the, the background of so many things. And it derived from an ancient Greek word called tecton. And it, the first thing that it, the analogy that it said was that tecton was often used as a word in the Bible to, that referred to Jesus as Jesus the tecton or an artisan, someone that works with his hands. I was like, well, that is it. <laughs> and so that's where it came from. So it came from an, an old Greek word, you know, that derived from tectonic. And uh, that's, that's how the, I just thought it was a great name kind of fits right into everything that we're doing. Some of the ideas that my business partners and stuff we're going to do going forward that we can't really disclose or talk about right now, but outfitting is just part of that, you know, uh, as part one part of the aspect of the, the puzzle that we're working on right now. And there's a lot of other tech involved. So it's kind of a play on words, but it also has a really cool religious background to it too. So. Yeah, that was, that's quite interesting. Uh, I, I'd have never, thought that's what it meant i just i just you know it, it's a name it had really have a meaning and and that's really cool that you know it has that you know specific meaning and and you know it, that's that really works pretty nice now how'd you come up with that logo so i'm um, i'm glad you asked uh so i actually uh started working on the original um logo back in 2000 and 14 or 15, 15, 14, 15, 2015. So I had the icon that works, the, the double T that I started designing back then for a company, which again, I can't talk about that, but I can tell you the name is called Syntec. And, um, and that was part of the design element of that, that logo. And so I've sat on it for, you know, going on 10 years now. And so whenever the name came up, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like literally the perfect icon. So I manipulated it a little bit uh, to where it is now. And um, it's really a, just not trying to be biased, but it's a really good, good design. It works really good with, you know, hats and shirts <laughs> as well. Um, so it, uh, it, it's going over really, really well. I have, um, I'm all sold out on all of our apparel um, just from posting a couple pictures this the other day. So, so that was kind of what we were hoping that we could really build the brand. Um, and, uh, thankfully, since I am a graphic designer, you know, it, it kind of came naturally and easy <laughs> for me to be able to just come up on stuff. Honestly, it's not easy because being a graphic designer, uh, and doing your own work is probably some of the hardest stuff because you're never finished. You're always constantly critiquing yourself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I think finally at this point, um, this is one that I can feel like I'm settled and it's, it's, it's a design where I'm very, very comfortable with. So, but. Um, and it's, it's kind of a cool design. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. You know, yeah, with I, text on, you know, kind of like a, a forward T, you know, it's kind of like a double T in there. And yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's pretty cool. Um, so by itself, you know, if you were eventually, you know, because I've had years of doing stuff in marketing and advertising and, you know, brand awareness, eventually, um, if you were to take away all that and you just see the icon, then, you know, eventually we want to train everyone where this is like the McDonald's golden arch. Right. And they see that. So, um, and, you know, if it's a T within a T and like you perceived it, tecton, it's got the double, you know, so it, it's pretty cool. It, it really works. Uh, it's it's cool whenever everything just kind of all just falls together, you know. Yeah, so. it's kind of amazing how you, 
all of a sudden, you know, you, you know, first thing in the morning or last thing at night, you know, these, these, you know, brainstorms come to you. I, I've had many times where as I'm getting ready to go to sleep, I'm dozing off and it's like, oh, that's what I need to do. That's the solution. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've, I've had that many times and, you know, so I just kind of let it go. The hard part is remembered it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sometimes I tell you uh, a lot of times, um, those, uh, middle of the night thoughts uh i try to remember to just to record them uh and jot down notes if i happen to wake up and i had some sort of silly dream but it made a lot of sense i'm like oh write that down real quick you know if you can remember to do it but sometimes that's hard because you're uh yeah. you fall right back asleep in the middle of typing something you know <laughs> yeah so writing it out and fall asleep and, and you got one key that's in duplicated a thousand times because you you fell asleep their finger on the keyboard and... exactly exactly <laughs> i've done that dude. working on something also does it's like oh what's that okay i have a screen full of one letter <laughs> exactly so yeah so for the first two weeks here this fall we're going to do um archery and i'm only taking groups of four at a time and i'm only taking a maximum of 20 hunters the entire season um, I'm not doing like an extended season where it's early season, all of October through, you know, the end of the season and trying to pack as many hunters as I can in here. Uh, I know a lot of places that do that and, you know, that's not a bad business model if you have enough land to do it and enough space to do it. But for us with that, it was just starting to get my feet wet and everything like that. Um, I decided that what I wanted to really focus on was just having very good, successful hunts, having low pressure. We have about 1,200 acres collectively now to be able to bounce people around in about 40 different sets. So I'm not a big advocate of bouncing all the time, but if we need to make some adjustments, we can. Um, I'm a big advocate of riding the hole because if anyone knows what's going through there consistently it would be me so just because they got one or two sits where they're not seeing something doesn't mean that it won't change like that so right. um but i also am big on low pressure and you know with having you know farms that are 160 acres or larger and seven or eight different parcels that allows me to be able to basically not have two people hunting over each other that would be essentially hunting the same deer so we can rotate people around people feel like they're comfortable with having their the entire farm to themselves you know and and that's kind of what we're doing and then and then um and then i'll have two groups of rifle hunters that are three-day rifle hunts uh immediately after that uh our rifle season comes here in on the 11th of this of november and um, it'll run out to the 21st. We got a 10-day rifle hunt here in Missouri, and um, it it's a whole different ball game whenever you can reach out and touch deer, you know. And yeah. and thankfully our, the rut, you know, for us, um, it it runs right in the middle of um, tail end of where I'm going to stop taking archery hunters that first week in November, and then you know those first two weeks of November. Uh, you know, going right before Thanksgiving are just phenomenal. It's, it's, it makes a lot of bow hunters cry. That's for sure. Because a lot <laughs> of the deer get killed during rifle season, but you know, we do offer both sides of the business. And then, um, I will do a, muzz a late season muzzleloader hunt with just some of my friends, um, after Christmas this year, just to kind of test the waters. And, you know, I mean, my wife and I, uh, we moved back to Louisiana in, in uh, July. And so um, I don't want to be away entirely too long from uh, my wife and especially my two and a half year old son. So um, just trying to try to break it up where I'm not here all fall. Um, and then uh, I have actually access to a lot of really good waterfowl hunts. And we have a area that has a, a flooded controlled marsh that we can control um and uh it's about an eight eight acre marsh it's pretty phenomenal so we're going to test the waters out for probably two or three groups of hunters this year i haven't even advertised that yet just because i'm trying to 
make sure we get everything ready to roll for yeah. deer season. But, um, and then we will do, we have phenomenal turkey seasons up here, really good numbers of birds. So I'll do that as well on the spring. And usually that's the second, like the last two weekends of April, or the last two weeks of April, usually into the first week of May is usually whenever we have those seasons. And then I'll, you know, shut all this stuff down. So, um, but uh, yeah, so that's, uh, and I think actually I'm looking right now, I think my buddy uh, is trying to, trying to get in uh, as he, I sent him and he, uh, he's waiting your approval. Oh, in the group? Yeah, I, he wants to join. Okay. okay, let me let him in here real quick. Like my, my computer to catch up. <laughs> Oh, you're good. <laughs> All right, we got two people wanting in. Maybe my dad as well. Looks like he read it. I, I did. I did see. I think it was Eric and I had to look at both of them that were getting in. But... Yep, I sent one to Eric, one to Jeff, and then one to Ron. Well, two people have requested I let them in. So they're in awesome. the group. Awesome. Well, the other one's Ivan. Yeah, it's my friend Ron. Uh, he's quite the character. <laughs> <laughs> if you've read his name, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a very vocal friend of mine and uh, politics don't really apply very well on uh, on Facebook. And so he's been banned a few times because he's very <laughs> outspoken and I appreciate that uh, aspect of him, but Facebook doesn't. So he gets really creative with his names. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw it or not. He may have been, that may have been the one that accepted it, but uh the way he pronounced and wrote his name would make it sound like I'm cussing, but it's actually <laughs> not a cuss word. It's pretty funny. Uh, oh yeah, I I've been yep yeah, puked. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, I've been fucked. <laughs> oh okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> Yeah, good old Ivan. Yeah, he's probably gonna get a chuckle out of all this. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I can't. I don't want to say it because I don't want to sound like I'm cussing. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. it it's pronounced P H U U D. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Well, you gotta get creative, you know. We oh, he, he's creative. It, 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 it literally he gets the uh, definitely the creative name award for that one. I, I still <laughs> chuckle. My dad and I both chuckle about that name quite often. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I just say that. It's like, okay, what what foreign country is he from? But I, exactly, <laughs> I mean, that, that's the whole point about it. Not to dive into that too deep, but he said, I know that I won't get banned if I have a name that looks like that. I was like, yeah, I guess you're true. That's true. You know, so <laughs> it's what makes it even funnier. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, all this stuff that's going on. But hey, you know what? We still got archery. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. They're, yeah, they're I, not they're not trying to ban it yet. <laughs> that's right. Well, I uh I am very excited, and I will, we'll get back into that sort of conversation, but these spots that I have this year, um, it has been the most difficult year for me as far as uh, not wanting to get in a stand, and I, I've sat just two times just to scout, and that's the only purpose that I got in there for, so I this is the first year in probably 10 years that I have not hunted probably 30 days by now you know with the boat I mean usually oh, I'm in the stand all the time and I'm doe management and all this but we've been so busy trying to get this place set up because not only are we going to do this stuff in the fall but in between you know maybe waterfowl and then after all deer seasons are, and all seasons are over 
the house will be set up as an Airbnb. So we have a lot of renovations I'm doing to the house and the shop as well, because I'm going to stay in the shop behind the house as well as my buddy that's going to be the other guide. And so we're trying to get all that stuff done over there too. And so it's just a mountain of stuff. So I haven't even had, had the time to go sit. I've sat two, two, two times, one evening and one morning. <laughs> Um, but anyways, the sets that I have that, you know, we have lock-ons, we have blinds, elevated blinds, and we have, uh, you know, 20 foot, you know, ladder stands that can be dual purpose. They got a rail if you want to be able to rifle hunt out of them too. But these, this property also is property that I've been wanting to try to get for about five years now, since I've been up here. So we finally got that and these spots are just phenomenal. So it's literally killing me. And I'm just like, I cannot wait for these guys to come and sit in these things because I feel like these are the best sets that I've hung in my entire life. You know, I went in, took a lot of advice from a lot of my other buddies that are phenomenal outfitting operations all the way from here to Nebraska and Oklahoma and Texas. And, you know, some of the best advice that I pulled from them was focus on just A plus spots and not trying to have a, B, and C pot spots where you might just stick someone in there and they may have a chance of seeing something. Just focus on having just really good spots all the time. So that eliminated me from, you know, always pulling up my, you know, hunt stand map and I'm pre scouting everything before I even get out there. And I got, okay, 15 different dots where I want to go put stuff. Now focus on trying to cut that in down by you know two thirds where you only have five really good spots depending on the size of the property and then based upon that in your first year of property then you can start adding some more stuff going forward so that's what we did you know i mean it just unfortunately um this all sort of played out where i got all this thousand acres in august so i had oh. from august until now to develop everything and, you know, two week spots, spurts at a time, going back and forth from here to Louisiana um, to be able to do it. So we got everything done. Thankfully, my good friend Mike was able to really help out do all this stuff and business partner because um, it wouldn't have happened. But we got it done. And uh, anyways, I'm super excited for these these this first group to come in. Um, the, the red moon starts on the 28th, I believe up here or the 29th. So they're going to catch like three of the four days with the red moon phase here in, in October. we got a cold front coming in, uh, this weekend. They bring a little bit of precipitation, but it's going to really drop those temps. The, the deer have been kind of acting a little funny the past two weeks, but they're in that phase where they're transitioning out of the pre-rut, reestablishing their new, you know, core locations for the fall. And so I'm really starting to see a lot of new deer that I haven't been seeing, but for long, you know, it's just a matter of probably this cold front, you know, it historically this upcoming weekend, a lot of the biggest deer are always killed around the, th the uh, Halloween weekend up here. And it's also um, youth season this weekend. So there is some extra added pressure in the woods of the youth uh, rifle hunters shooting and stuff like that. So um, that's an added benefit in my book because, uh, you know, I don't have any youth hunters that I'm taking. So everything else is going to flock to our <laughs> quiet spots. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be it's shaping up to be. Uh, yeah, a great, great season. We're super excited. Um, I'm, I, I'd like to have, you know, met all of my numbers. You know, we're booked out with rifle. We just were missing one spot with archery. May have a, someone that come in and, and possibly come in last minute, but we'll just see, play it by ear for that next week. Um, but, you know, uh, can't really ask much more to be able to be practically booked up in your first year. Or so, yeah. Uh, so, it was, it's been, uh, exciting. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> I guess one of the things for someone, anyone that's a guide, um, and in particular, I guess those that are doing it for year one, you know, when you're getting to much new ground, um, especially a lot of stuff that's 
row crop ground that's in corn, um, you could easily get discouraged by what deer you have on your property because these deer just live in the corn fields, especially if they have any sort of um, areas that hold water from the pivots and stuff like that, which almost all my properties did. So during the summertime, it's hard to get a good buck inventory and, and to be able to advertise in your first year to be able to get, you know, people booked up because you don't know exactly what you have to offer um, other than the fact that you know that it's good ground and, and you've seen what's historically been killed in those areas. Um, but that's what I guess my advice is that, you know, if you have ground or if you're getting ground and stuff like that, don't necessarily get discouraged by the fact that you're not seeing a lot of stuff during the summer in cornfields because those jokers a lot of times just live in there. You, you're going to get your pictures on the edges of cornfields if they're popping out in between the corn and going into the timber during the summer times or waterways or anything like that. But um, it's very easy, you know, to get discouraged, you know, but just, just hold, have the faith because as soon as yeah. it gets you'll start seeing a, a, a heck of a lot more. So um, that's a whole different ball game when if you have soybeans, because soybeans fields, you know, you can, you can watch what it's out there and you can glass the entire time. But in, right. you know, even, you know, at, there's at no point, you, unless the soybeans are four feet tall and you just can't see the deer, you're going to get a good idea of what you have on that farm. Um, right on those types of properties but and I have you know both farms with that have that I still have standing soybeans right now on a few other farms too so um and they'll be rotated into uh winter wheat whenever uh those properties are harvested um and the corn fields are just been dissed and and prepared and stuff like that for next season but they're not planting anything We've got a lot of volunteer corn this year um so a lot of those corn uh, corn that didn't make it uh, and harvested has all started to sprout up. So you, mm -hmm. it just looks like a big lush green field uh, out there that's, you know, maybe six, seven inches tall. So they're eating all that lush brand new growth right now too. So um, so they'll have a lot to look at, that's for sure. Yeah, there is. So if anybody's interested in it, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, the easiest thing to do would just be to either message me personally uh, on Facebook, Justin Hood, or uh, Tecton Outdoors, and uh, just shoot us a message. You could call me uh, or text me at 225-485-7414, um, and that would probably be the easiest, you know, ways to reach out directly. Most of, I guess I want to say probably 90% of my bookings have been through Facebook so far this year. Um, That's and just <laughs> just people messaging and thankfully i haven't had to spend any advertising dollars so um just doing post and being smart about the post and not saying hunting or going shoot animals or anything like that and, and <laughs> saying yes yeah. taking pictures and and being being slick about how you make the post that it, it doesn't get flagged and you can it can get shared pretty easily on Facebook. So there's, there's tricks of the trade. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, you never know what they're going to flag. I was looking at a post says, what's your favorite car? And I said, 69 Z20 Camaro. You get flagged as inappropriate. Like, but just because I put 1969. Yeah. It, yeah. It, they flagged it. You know, they of picked course. up. Yeah. yeah. Like what it would happen to be, you know, 1969 Z20 Camaro, which is, what I drove in high school. Exactly. You know, it's like, hey, that was a great car. <laughs> a pretty hot car, especially after we built the engine. But yeah, so, um, yeah, you have a website? Uh, no, actually, I haven't even had a chance to build the website because this all I had to throw all this all together since August. Okay. So uh, I have the Facebook page uh, and that will be sufficient for right now. I, I bought all of the, the stuff to do the website. I just haven't had a chance to build it myself. Um, I'll be doing all that too. Uh, that's uh, something else that I don't advertise, but I do do websites on occasion. If I, if the, you know, right person contacts me and I'm, <laughs> and I'm available. So 
Yeah, it's, it, you know, I, I've got uh, um, archtalk101.com uh, and I built that one, of course, you know, WordPress and, you know, and I just, I post stuff out there and I put links out there and, you know, I don't keep up with as much as I should, but, you know, I, I've got, you know, podcasts I'm recording, YouTube channel I'm, I'm sure. you know, feeding videos to and, and here uh, about a month ago, I, I got a job offer that I couldn't probably turn down. So I was like, okay, that, that took about 10 hours, five days a week out of, out of my schedule. And um, so, you know, hey, is that, what you're, is, that, is that what you're doing mostly afternoon, evening stuff now? Because I remember whenever I talked to you last time, we did a morning. And whenever right. I, was looking, I was looking at the calendar, I was like, something's changed. Either he's doing a lot of these things or something else <laughs> that he's doing, he's doing during the day. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Congratulations. Yeah, I, I uh, uh so that's happened during the day. So I can't do mornings anymore. And I got evenings. So, you know, roughly from, you know, five to six is a good time frame. And, and right now I've got a, a we got a truck that my wife bought and now we're going through and fixing all up supposed to be just, just brakes. We knew it was just brakes. So, you know, rotors, pads, calipers, cause one was grinding all down and the shoes and drums in the back. Um, no, that was just the start of it. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. And it rains at pours, huh? Yeah. Well, and then the 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 ball joints, upper and lower, and on one, one lower one, it was completely cracked. Uh, so both those had to get replaced, and they're riveted in. And then we had on the um, tie rod ends, those I could just move those. So okay, replacing those. And then <laughs> then we had on the sway bar that's up there. One side was shot; the other side wasn't even connected. Uh, and then we, we got to pull the shocks off to get because we had to replace the lower control arm because it was cheaper than buying the whole thing. Couldn't do the upper one, so we had to take them off. So we got all this stuff off, changing shocks. Yeah, we spent more on on repairs than we did on it, but we got it for a good price. So it's we're gonna spend about what it's worth. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. By the time you get cool. done, but you, you know, it's that's why my weekends are full because I got to get it going. And you know, they're talking about snow Sunday. I don't know if that in Missouri. Where you guys out again? Nebraska. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. What? Where about in Nebraska? Um, Ithaca, in between Omaha and Lincoln. Okay. Just straight okay. north. Just straight north of Kansas City, basically. Yeah. 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 I, yep. I know. I know where you're at. I, I usually drive right through you whenever I head over to my buddy's place in Burwell. So. I oh yeah. Way and then I'll cut across, a little ways past that, and uh, then I'll cut over to go to Burwell. Yeah, I'm right off Highway 66. Okay, okay, just Great. a little bit, a little bit east of 77. So I'm 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 an north. hour and 45 minutes south of Kansas City. So, oh, okay, so yeah. you're about three hours from here. Yep, not very far at all. That's crazy. No, close. That's cool. Yeah, we're close. <laughs> but so even you, closer by use the internet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you you guys, um, I wouldn't say you guys. I don't know what you guys have. I know over towards the, or towards Burwell, they have Miriams over there, but they're yeah. more more of a hybrid. Um, do you guys even get that strand over there, or do you guys mainly do you have do you have Easterns, or do you have more Rios? Because I know, and t it kind of shifts kind of when you're getting up towards those areas. Yeah, I I'm not too much on on turkey hunting. Uh, of which brands we got um <laughs> i i should be because i got a flock of about three dozen that hangs out less than a mile away from me <laughs> well you know if you ever get bored and you don't you need someone to take care of those i can help you out there so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been out forgetting a few times but you know it, it most a lot of times you know in the, in the fall uh, coincides with deer hunting and i'd rather sit in a deer stand and and go after deer instead of trying to go off them crazy turkeys well yeah i mean I, if i have a, a big bird that comes by and i'm hunting with my bow you know during right during deer season uh I, I did it last year it was the first time i ever shot one in the fall with my bow and that was pretty cool but it's an entirely different experience because you're not calling them in basically um you just got to kind of get lucky or know where they're coming off the roost and they're you know feeding their way or just making yeah. their route towards you um but the sun springtime's a whole different ball game whenever they're just firing off and you're chasing them and you know they're calling oh, oh. you're decoying oh yeah them. but 
but yeah, you're right. I would much still, I still prefer chasing, chasing whitetail, uh, this time of the year. So, um, yeah. I have a lot of buddies asking me how on earth am I doing this, but some of the deer that I have that are on camera this year and, um, not go, wanting to go hunt. And they're like, are you going to go hunt while they're here? I'm like, I can't like, I, I would love to, but I, I want them to have the opportunity at those animals. And so for me to go and whack one, you know, on a different property that they weren't hunting or before the other hunters come and everything like that, they just, it wouldn't look good. And, you know, I mean, it's just not a good, good business plan. So I have designated spots for me to hunt that, that, um, they know that, you know, these would be my spots, my personal spots. If I, if I like them enough or they're in a desperate situation, I let them go hunt the deer that I have kind of in properties I've set aside for myself. Um, but you know, if I go whack a deer and it just happens to be bigger than theirs, it's a private prop spot for me to guide, you know, to go yeah. on. I, all the best spots are saved for them, but you know, it's just, it's kind of silly. You know, one of the, I, I can't show the pictures of them and I'm not going to talk much about it, but I had a very big deer that came on camera last night, right behind the house. I'm like, well, it's just, you know, it's behind the house, you know, it's going to be kind of, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my place, you know? So, you know, if, if I decide I want to go hunt it, maybe I'll, I'll go hunt it at, after seasons out, you know, uh, or not seasons out but after hunters are out so that that way right. uh i give them a fair chance of trying to get on that deer but you know that's how i, I have to kind of you know pres you know i guess handle things you know yeah you, you know if you've got you know like 400s 500s out there however many you have out there and then you go out and hunt and you bring back bigger one and any of them even seen it's like um i'm paying you to hunt and yet you're getting bigger deer than I even seen, you know, and then yeah. that doesn't, that doesn't look good. You know, where that's why, you know, that's why I tell them, but it's like, it does not look good. And, you know, that's a great way to not get repeat customers. And you'll have some groups that just want you to hunt with them and have fun. But at the same time, it's just like, man, I want to, but what if I'm in the middle of a hunt and I got a giant that's coming in and you're calling me and you need some help, you know, what do you do then? Well, right. Of course, I need to go help them. They got first priority. So, and then I may, may, may spook that deer and not get an opportunity to hunt that one or have someone else go hunt it. So, you know, my thought process was that, you know, when I don't have anyone in camp, you know, then I can maybe go and do something like that on a property right. that if someone hasn't been seeing a picture of a deer that they've been sleeping, sleepless nights, counting down the days to try to go hunt that one deer that they see on camera. And I, and I'm careful about how much I share because I don't want people to get fixated on one animal. This is all low fence. So it's good to know what's in the area, but don't expect that you're going to have that one deer because they're none of them are tied up, you know? So you never no. know. You may have a bigger deer that comes through that I never had on camera because you just don't know what the rut's going to do, you know? Uh, and, it's it's like that every year and so i have to try to be careful as far as sending too much because some of these guys they want to see stuff like every single day and i'm like man i you know i i know you're excited but at the same time i i, I got to be careful because i again i don't want one deer fixated and then they want to try to hunt that one deer and uh favoritism and all that stuff you know might set in within the the camp so it's just one of those things we're going to focus on what we're seeing at the time on camera and what the wind is doing and then go from there so that's kind of yeah. how we're going to handle it i think it's the fairest way to you know yeah and and you know that i don't care you know i, I go out hunt does you know yeah. if a buck comes by i'll shoot it if not you know i'm out there to get the meat you know, so I, I don't care, you know, if it's, if it's a buck or a doe, if I will, if it's a big buck comes by, I'm not going to pass it up as long as I have the tag for it, but, sure. um, you know, I'm out there to get, get food. Absolutely. You know? And the yeah. does taste better than the bucks anyway. So, 
<laughs> they always do. That's why I always told my, my buddy from best friend back home in Louisiana. I'm like, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to like sh shame you for shooting a small deer. Cause that's not the type of person I am. But at the same time, his argument with everyone else that's doing that is that, well, I'm just trying to put meat on the table. I'm like, just shoot you a damn doe. You're like, right. It tastes better anyways, you know? <laughs> so yeah they, they do and I, I know when you know when i take a, a new hunter out uh, i know when i took my, my daughter out you know there's during rifle season because she couldn't pull back a bow enough to kill a deer unless it was a crossbow and i told her okay the first year that comes by go ahead and shoot it i don't care what it is now if sure. it's a fawn we're going to talk about after that we're letting the fawns go. You know? sure. So she had a doe and a, and a fawn come by and she took the doe, you know, let, let the fawn go. And, and then you went out and she wanted to shoot a buck and she didn't get another shot, but Hey, you know, <laughs> you know, that your first year, no, oh, yeah. shoot, shoot it. The first time an opportunity, if you haven't ever shot a deer before, the first one that comes by that you can get a shot at and, and make a good killing kill, take it. Absolutely. So funny story. Um, <laughs> I guess it was three years ago. Uh, my sister, it wasn't her first time she's hunted, but this, I guess it probably was the first time I ever hunted with her. And I took her out on one of these places that uh, I had access to it that year. And it was during rifle season. And uh, it was, we were on the fence whether or not we were going to go out it was i mean for me i was i was like this best conditions this is where big deer are killed it's raining and just drizzling and just nasty and overcast and cold and uh i was like this is a good time to be in the woods especially inside of a, a, a fiberglass blind you know that way we could stay warm and, and stay right. out of the elements and uh <laughs> she ended up shooting uh it would have been over 150 inch 10 point it just that it was all broken up so some of those you know extra time that didn't count so it was still an upper 40 deer she never killed a deer before in her life uh and i'm like she's she spotted it before i spotted it because i was looking at her she's like oh she's like bubba there's there's a big deer you know I think it's a big buck. I'm like, I was like, shoot, shoot, shoot that damn thing, you know? <laughs> like, hurry up. I, uh, I was like, I told her, I said, think you better be lucky that I wouldn't have done it. I would have let her shoot it anyways, but I always teased her out. I said, I thankfully I shot my deer first because I probably would have that gun off your hand and shot it myself. But uh no, I mean it's, I would never have done that, but it was just a running joke um that we have. And uh she's still uh has shot the biggest one in, in the in the family group uh up here up to this date. And uh it's just, it's just funny. Uh we still joke about it to the day, to this day. So and it's cool that you got to see her do it. Yeah, it was really cool. And then the next day we went out there and I was able to take a lot of professional um uh photos for her. And naturally and at that point I was filming a film just about everyone else's hunts. And it was nasty, and we were last minute deciding whether or not we we're going to go. So, of course, I didn't pack the camera with me that night, uh, and so we didn't get that one on camera. Uh, but I made up for it, and we got some really cool photos the next day for her uh, to have memories of. But you know, it's just how it goes; it never fails. You know, you, you go <laughs> in the woods and you you don't pack that camera in for some for some reason, and uh, that's always the time that it happens. It never fails. So. Um, it's better to have it and not then and not use it than yeah not have it. so yeah that's that's always uh um you know the philosophy that a lot of use on on a lot of other items as well it's like better to have it not need it than to need it not have it that's right that's right and then I'm, <laughs> I sometimes I'm superstitious I'm like well it hasn't happened yet so I'm gonna change things up and I'm gonna leave it behind and hoping that it will happen and then it, then it does happen of course so but yeah it, um it's all fun it's always just always just trying to have fun it's all there's to it not having fun in the outdoors and 
You don't need to be in the outdoors. Yeah, you always got to carry stuff. My backpack has got so much stuff in it. Oh, yeah. you know, I wouldn't have to carry all that, you know, because I'm not that far away from the vehicle. So I can always go back and get it, you know, pick it up. But like, I just like having it all with me. You know, I get extra gloves, flashlights, knives, uh, ropes, um, you know, extra gloves, <laughs> hats, <laughs> all kinds of stuff that I'll have with me that, you know, don't need and you know, binoculars and rangefinder now. Now that I have a rangefinder, I got one last year and uh, I only used it first time last year when I went out rifle because when they was coming through, I couldn't set up a tree stand and they're coming through too early in the morning. So I wanted to set up further away so that I could, you know, hopefully they'd come out and be in the field with mm -hmm. light enough to shoot. And I want to know, you know, the range because, you know, rifle set up, you know, I know the ranges and I was like, okay, that's good range. Put cross for when I go. Nothing came by. <laughs> Other than when I was first getting off the four wheeler to go there, um, two two deer come by. My son shot one. He only come running past me, and I was like, I didn't got my gun out of the, out of the case yet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's how it goes, man. Uh, it's always be prepared. Scout motto: always be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't get any closer to being prepared than, than where I was at because I just stopped the four-wheeler, got a thing off, got my gun out, hadn't had a chance to load it yet. <laughs> it's how it always happens. It's yeah. it's, it's humorous, but uh, I can tell you one thing. That doesn't ever happen if you are on the couch and not going out and trying. So Oh, <laughs> true. I, I had one time I was was kind of late getting to the tree stand so i'm got the tree stand um i got my bow hooked to the the rope i climb up get all strapped in pull my, my bow up and then um you know i always take my quiver off and i got a little receiver i can take my quiver off and fasten it to the tree oh and yeah it, and it's like okay i got my arrow and it's like here comes this this buck and it's like oh that's a buck so i hurry up and got there and i drew back and and and, and shot and i didn't realize how big it was until I got back to the store, it's time when I own um, own a sporting goods store, and I'm sitting in the range, and I'm looking out there, and I can see the rack sticking up above the back of the truck. <laughs> I'm sitting down lower than bed. It's like that is a big one. I, I never even realized. I didn't even pay attention to it because I focused on where I wanted that arrow to go, and I, I I seen it was a buck, and after that, I never even seen the rack. You know, until we're hauling it out. Of course, you know, we got on, hands on it. You know, pulling it out, but still, you know. It wasn't until later that I said, oh, that is a big one. <laughs> you know, I was focused on one thing, where my arrow needed to go. Yeah. And I focused on my shot and, you know, made my shot and, you know, it didn't run too far. And <laughs> That's all. That's the most important thing. Just follow through those steps for sure. So you mentioned that you uh, attach your quiver to tree. You're not using a, the outright product are you or it's a quick detach um uh, i have the pse quiver okay a PSE and quiver. i have an extra receiver that you normally mount onto your bow i have an extra of those and then i forget who it is makes makes a thing it's got you can screw a receiver onto it for your quiver and then a little, a little bolt that you can screw it to your tree and i just flip that cam pull it pull it off the bow stick it on the tree and yeah, so outright uh outright products or outright tree products um um they actually have um i want to say it's five sixteenths uh, uh basically you know how uh, uh the, the quick detach uh happens and takes place on like an impact or, or drill where you can push it forward and it locks kind of like around oh, yeah. that chuck um you attach those to you know a five sixteenth bit and then you can actually just drill them into the tree. So you preset all these quick detach uh, anchors. And then oh, you yeah. can actually take, and it just locks in just like how a, a drill locks and unlocks. And you can put your bow arm there and you can also lock, uh, you can mount one of those to your quiver. And so you could just use a quick detach uh, to be able to take it on and off. I use those, uh, still use them. Uh, it's a really cool product. Uh, great archery product. 
So outright hunting products. Outright hunting products. And they'll they'll come with a whole kit and a pack. But if you buy into the whole pack, you can buy more of those um little anchors that you can just screw and preset all stuff in your tree. So then you can just take your oh, bow yeah. bow hanger with you. I shared my screen. Yep. Yep. That's that's them. Yep. Uh, and outright hunt dot com. Yep. And uh, if you go down, scroll down, I want to say, see, I did that video for them right there. That, uh, oh, yeah, this video here? Yeah, I did that for them several years ago. The more, kinda, kinda the more pro bow hanger system by Outright Hunting Products. Yep. And I put one of these in every one of my trees in my tree stands because I like to hang my bow on it. Because I don't want to hold it all the time, or if I'm doing something, I can hang it up and when that's sure. where it's dropping. So this um, one, you 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 put those anchors in, and then you take that hanger and and you just keep it in your pack with you, and you can take it and just connect it whenever you're on the go. So oh, that that's way, cool. yeah, that way you you always know whether or not you know, uh, especially if you're traveling. You can set all those things up, and you see the little silver portion is the anchor system, right. and it comes with a little chuck. But if you if you were there like during the summer, you can preset them with an impact, and just go ahead and put them in place. But those hang those those little adapters right there allow you to hook um, your uh, you can mount their uh, quiver adapter right to it, and it'll lock it right into the tree. You can hook. Um, little uh camera arms on it to be able to run a gopro if you want it to yeah um there's a lot of little different adapters like yeah you, know, you can see there all the little different accessories that you can you can add so that would that's the whole kit right there um cool little system um yeah it looks like it really is convenient and it all folds up in that little bag and you can just stick it uh, in your backpack and always have one with you oh yeah you can see the the looks like a, a, a leg bolt with a washer on the end of it yeah it's like a lag bolt and and and, and i want to go see if maybe we can uh see if this show like maybe i think that little button right there shop outright products yeah see if it, you should be able to buy those screws by themselves so click on that right there little button and then it's uh taking off right there <laughs> oh yeah the load Okay, so you kind of get an idea right there on that one where you can see where it's connecting to that, that basically it's a chuck and uh, it didn't, you slide it back and it disengages and whenever you uh, push it down on it, it's spring loaded. So it automatically locks in just like a, a quick detach works. It's the exact same technology, but on the- Like your air hose. Yeah, yeah, yep. So it's, uh, it's pretty slick. Um, and I guess maybe that's, I'm trying to see, if there should be a pack where you can buy. Um, I haven't been on their website in a while. So let's see if there's a, yeah. So up the, all the way at the top right, there's a button that says shop. Yeah, we'll click on that one. See if we can find, you know, when we find cool products, you know, that's that's the, the time to start looking at them. Okay, see. so now look at it here. See all the way to the left. Now there's a, don't hover over, but you can see almost how that head is. It's designed just like a, like a, like a, any sort of like driver uh, head. There should be, right. should be like a six pack or a three pack. We scroll down and you can see that you can buy extra yeah. one of those. You or you can, can even look on... right there. Yep, that's the same thing right there. So yeah, that's what that is. And then it and it an oversized fender washer that's welded to it. So then that way you can uh, really suck it down, especially if it, if you're presetting stuff, you know, over the summer, you can have all those things just set up. I mean, there was like four or five of them I would set up in a tree. So that way I could just hook all other stuff, all sorts of stuff up to them. Oh, um, here we go. Yep. So the ones in the middle um the bolt uh three pack are ones like if you wanted to go through and um mount them inside of like a hunting blind you can drill all the way through and then 
silicone the threads and then tighten that bolt down and then you could have adapters inside of your blind to attach to um and then obviously you got the the ones that are you know coarse threaded uh to go into wood you know and trees and stuff like that i've used them a lot of times to set trail cameras up uh, and use that camera camera mount um and uh what else have i used i've used uh an ozonics on them before uh oh yeah set it up as a quick detach that way way more convenient than having to you know try to do the traditional screw in sort of thing from ozonics so i've used them uh, a lot of different applications they're it's a great little product yeah it looks like it there's yeah because it's it's the same you know for those that can't see it if you take a regular impact um, bit you see a lot of their bits will have the the hex side on it and be a little um, space in the middle and continues where it locks into the like the impact drivers and that's what the head of this looks like so you just use your impact and just it just snaps right in yeah it's it's great and i believe it's a 5 16 bit that you would use if you were using an impact or just a drill um but there's so many different uses you can use these things for uh i, I oh, like yeah. i said I, they're they're great um and they even the like the bolt ones um depending on how you're wanting to set your cameras up which i don't normally Put my camera on the on a feeder itself you know obviously i can't do that here but it, like in louisiana where we have stuff i usually have the camera away facing the the feeders but right if you were to want to use those bolts and use one of the um camera arms you could uh fasten a a solar panel to it to run your spin cast feeder too so oh there's yeah a lot of different you know uses other than what it's just originally used for. So having the Morph Pro camera mount though allows you to be able to mount, like I was able to thread uh, with that thread on top instead of putting it on a trail camera or putting on a GoPro, which I used for both of them, I used it on my Ozonics unit. And so that uh, adapter worked out perfectly and I was able to just be able to adjust and, and modify the, um, actually kind of combine it with the, the Ozonics uh, adapter be able to make it work. So it worked great. Yeah, it's th there's so many new products out there that I can't keep up with them. So it's it's kind of nice getting getting somebody like you on that, that's tried some of these out because you know I'd see this like ah okay is, is that a gimmick or does it work you know and and now yeah you know those those that are thinking about it we know it works because your your guesstimate that you know how well that they're able to I, work and, and i've used them i, I want to say this is about five years now five six years that i've used my exact same kit so i'm using I use the exact same one so it's it's held up that long um so it's it's i've had it for a, a while and i like how it just rolls and folds right up kind of like a kind of like a knife kit if you ever yeah seen one of those. and it just goes and i can slide it right in my backpack and uh that that starter kit right there, um, I guess it comes with everything besides uh, your 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 camera mount. Uh, so that would be the only other thing you'd have to get. Yeah, have, camera mount's like only eighteen dollars for that. So yep, yep. yep. It's really, for everything you're getting, that's quite a bit in that. I gotta make sure I don't hover over the mouse because it, it kind of goes changes, goes yeah. away. I get close to it, but you know, one hundred thirty dollars for you know. All, all those like looks like you've got well not really steps but hangers they hang accessories you know like three different accessories on there you can set them out your bow hanger or your quiver hanger um not sure what the singles over on the right hand side is but um so the, all the, right hand, the, the right hand side yeah uh, the little spring the thing right hook, over in here the little hook um yeah you can put that behind uh uh you can mount it right in between the the silver fender washer and the actual um portion that you connect it to the uh the actual arm and then oh that, yeah it locks it in and then you can use it as a hook to hang a bag from 
Um, and so, and then that's the same thing for like the one all the way to the bottom left on that kit. Uh, you can do the same thing there and you can yeah. actually st strap the one on the, all, I think they sell it by itself. If you scroll down again. Um, yeah. See all the more pro strap mount hanger. So you can strap that one and instead of actually just screw it into the tree, if you had oh, something yeah. extra heavy and then you could then just use the arm and all the quick detach stuff to tie into that uh, kit itself or that part of the kit. Yeah, that looks like a pretty cool little, little system there. And, you know, once you start describing that's it, it's got that wash, you just take the threaded part uh, of the, the screw part and stick it through there and then fastens it to your tree. And it yep, looks like they're fairly long. So as long as you don't have any of the trees with, you know, that great big uh, um, inch and a half thick bark. <laughs> yep. And, and that nice thing about it, too, is that um, once you lock that, a little yellow or an orange chuck on there uh you can grab it and basically just slam it into the tree uh and it really sticks that way and then, then you can start ratcheting it and and putting it in just to get it started then you can finish tightening it by connecting the, the the arm to it to get a lot more leverage to tighten it quicker but uh i can't tell you how many times i've tried to hold on to a bow hanger and do that and jab it and there's <laughs> little bitty hooks that are on the underside of it that are used to hang your quiver from i think it's a real tree one uh and those little things like bear you know buried into my finger you know uh yeah. and it's just hard because you're having to try to stab it like a knife that way where this 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 way you can literally just you know almost hit it with your ball or your fist and it just jabs it in there really well. And then you use that chuck to tighten it, you know, a few times around to get it started to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, wobbling out your hole and yeah. then finish it with the hanger. So it's pretty quick, um, but yeah, it's a great product. So one that I, I really enjoy using. I obviously, I, I can't do that for um what i'm doing here so every single set set that i have set up has the exact same things in the exact same areas to make sure that everyone's covered and they don't have to worry about bringing anything like that out and setting any of that stuff up but for right. me if I was hunting and making a set or if i was doing saddle hunting and stuff like that this is just really convenient because it's really easy to have everything there on the go and it's all very easy to organize inside of the pack and um and you don't lose anything once you roll it all up so but yeah that's, yeah. A, that, that's pretty I'm, I'm glad you mentioned something about that because uh, you know that's that's another cool product that uh, uh it's really cool to check out yeah it, it like i said it that kit is perfect for on the go stuff and modifications when you're doing stuff on the fly but what I really love is an off season, if, especially if I'm developing a property, is buying a lot of, of those extra um, anchors and just go ahead and preset and, and, and drilling in all those things. And that way I have all these different hookups that I can just attach and detach, you know, yeah. uh, and, and, and it saves you in the long run if you've been investing in something like this, opposed to, I mean, by the time you buy, depending on how big and, and where you're getting them and how, what sort of sale you're getting if you're spending you know 10 or 12 bucks a pop for hangers so if you got you know 20 sets well then you've already spent twice as much as what this set costs so right and, and you have like here when this this picture you've got the uh looks like a, a couple section there you got your bowing in and your quiver sitting on there your backpack yes. hanging from that little that little so that's hook a great, over here in the great corner. example yeah so he used everything there so you see how you get exactly you get the little hook that you put on the back of the tree and then you have your first section um actually your first section is your extension right there so that's your extension right. arm and then the middle section is the um the arm with the uh the quick detach that's 90 degree off of the shaft so that you could put your quiver like that and then you have the uh, the third arm, which is your final arm that actually has the hook. Um, and that's really convenient. I, I, a lot of times I don't need that 
long of a setup. So I would always just, just not use the extension and I would connect the, uh, the middle section to the tree and then have the front section with the hook and just have a two, two part section to where there's only two swivel points instead of three. Well, I guess technically yeah. there's still only two pivot points, but it's just a longer middle section. Yeah, that's a that's pretty cool. There, this looks like here in a little, little extension where you can stand out, you know, and also go off so the side. Yeah, that would be the middle section, and then the extension that would be the this one that's, section right here. Yep. Yep, that's an extension. Yep. Yep. And then uh see how it it has a it does not the extension does not have a pivot point on it. Right. Um, but the 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 one against the tree actually has a pivot point and it acts as it says it's like an extended pivot point, the one that's all the way next to the tree. Right. And then so, you can always have it shortened to where you just have like a, a 16 inch um hook where it pivots and connects to the tree and you have a pivot point too if you just wanted a shorter setup. So um there's definitely, you know, the 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 ability to modify on the fly depending on your you know tree is uh is really helpful, you know, with uh, this this product for sure. Yeah, it looks like this is the first section, the second section, and the third section. When you look at yep. this over here, this is the first, the second, third section. Yep. So that, that's that's a pretty cool little setup, and it's not really that expensive, really, for for what you're getting. No, and then you see right there, there's the the, the quiver mount, so you can actually just tap some little small holes in your quiver and use those thread uh, those screws and, and tighten it down on there. And then that's that allows you to a quick detach and attach your quiver to your setup pretty quickly. So, and then if you don't want it on your, your arm like that, how they had it, you could always just mount it to the, the tree, just like how just it's like, there. Yep. yep. So. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty cool. So I have to keep that in mind and uh, any, anybody listening or watching, you know, if you've used this, hey, I'd like to hear your stories of, you know, how you're using it. it it's always, always nice to hear other stories of how people, different people are using the things. Yeah, it's a, it's a great product. I've uh, killed quite a few bucks uh, in the woods when I had that set up. So it was uh, real, real, real helpful. So, well, man, I am going to have to get rolling here for long. <laughs> I didn't even realize yeah. what time it was. I'm looking at an hour, well over an hour now. So, but uh, yeah, yeah. well, it seems like last time on us too. So, <laughs> yeah, but it seems like, you know, we plan for an hour, but you know what? I have an extra hour reserved after because they seem to always run long. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. As absolutely. long as we don't have something come up we have to get to, then, you know, hey, we can talk. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's it's been great having you on. And, you know, I always learn something every time. You know, I get somebody on talking and, you know, what you're doing now is really, really pretty cool. What you've got set up down there in Missouri and, you know, you're, you're not that far away from me up here too. So it's, it's kind of nice. We have kind of the same seasons, you know, here in yeah, Nebraska, yeah. our ruts, the second week of November, our rifle season, the second week of November. And um, I remember when I was a deer check station, one year they, they moved rifle season out a week. And I couldn't believe how many archers were checking in these big bucks. And then they went back. So now then, you know, they didn't get the big bucks like like they had been before. But, you know, sure. like you down there, that that week right before the rut is probably the best time I've had. You know, like the Friday before rifle season seems to oh, be yeah. one of the better days for archery. And, 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 and now the nice thing about now is, in Nebraska is archery doesn't stop during rifle season. Oh, you can still good. go out. They got to wear orange during rifle season. Um, if you dare to go out, <laughs> yeah, you, you sure. know, there's a lot of people out there and, and, you know, it, it's still pretty safe, but I still, um, you know, during rifle season, we got to wear orange, yeah, which is all right. Too. It's, it's actually kind of strange. Um, we have to, you can wear orange, but during rifle season, the 10 day rifle season, you can bow hunt, but you have to tag it with your rifle tag, even though you harvest it with your bow. I don't understand that one bit, but 
because it's during rifle season, you have to tag it with your firearms tag, even though you're bow hunting. <laughs> I, I was like, if I got to tag it with the rifle tag, I'm just going to use my rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I There's some really goofy, goofy, goofy rules out here. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, uh, I'm I got one more person that's asking me they couldn't access it uh anyways i got a roll man i appreciate you having me on i'd love to uh chat another time here maybe after the season maybe we can look at can doing like a little recap of what how we how we went how it went yeah yeah that that'd be great i'd like to you know after season get back on and and, and you know see how it was going and and see what's going on and, and you know after your first season and you know what what you plan on changing and and what worked well what didn't work and and you know some of the success stories and you know if we we maybe get some of the people that had success stories out there get them on the podcast as well talk about yeah. their experiences with that that would be a, a great uh a day you know having some of the people yeah, out there that fun. that showed up and you know you know offer it to those you know if they have a successful hunt you know after the hunt hey let's get them on and talk about you know th their hunt um yeah that, and uh, that's a great idea so we'll have to definitely try and plan yeah. to do that with one or two people so, yeah yeah just but, let uh, let them know it's like hey um give them a link to my calendar and book the time in <laughs> sure, sure you know well, that's, that's I, great, i'm man. open anybody well, wants to get on talk about hunting or target you know you don't have to be a hunter you, you just an archer you know sure, hey we're sure. glad to talk talk archery all all day long and for a long time so um, that's been great having you on. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll talk again. And uh, um, you know, it's it's been been great. And for those uh, uh, listening to the podcast on Spotify, it's also available on Audible uh, for free. And then, uh, as we kind of alluded to in the Arch Talk One on Facebook group, you get to watch it live. Uh, and on my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself, I'll actually post the video out there too. So uh, there's a lot of places you can watch and listen to it. And comment. You can always get a hold of me. Uh, I'm not hard to find. <laughs> Just Google Arch Talk 101 and <laughs> you're going to find me. <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me on, on man. And uh, uh, I'll, we'll keep in touch this fall and, and schedule a, a post postseason podcast. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. I'd, that, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, have well, a great season to you yeah. if you don't, between now and then. And we'll be talking soon. Have a good rest of your week, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for being on. I really enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Rory Canterbury, and I've been your host today on Arch Talk 101, and we'll see you on the next one.